You, you are a fine fisherman. <laughs> Only need three more years before I can think like a fish. I'm already <laughs> thinking like a dead stone fly. <laughs> pictures. Oh, uh, oh, there's pictures. Hurry up. One. A River Runs Through It was an excellent movie based on an even better book. A story of well, love and loss, family and fishing. The author was Norman McLean, who didn't publish his magnum opus until he was 74 years old. It catapulted him into the pantheon of great American writers and set the standard for generations of what a great novella could be. It also introduced millions of Americans to the beauty of fly fishing. Norman passed away in 1990, but his influence lives on. His son, longtime journalist John McLean, is out with The Chronicle looking back on that story, his family, and the impact of his father's legacy. It's called Home Waters. This could be the one. I fished the Blackfoot River in northwestern Montana from the time I was big enough to tag along with my father and the other men of my family, yearning to the day when I, like them, would catch an enormous rainbow trout, the river's signature fish. John McLean has been wrestling with a river for the better part of his life. As he writes in his new book, Home Waters, many go through life without glimpsing heaven and hell. But fishing with my father gave me an early appreciation of both. The book is a tribute to the place and people who defined him. I describe the book as sort of a river. It, it meanders. It picks up steam in parts and then slows down. You, you go all over the place. I do, uh, but it's the same river. That river is the Big Blackfoot in western Montana, the setting for an all-time great American adventure. In our family, there was no clear line between religion and fly fishing. A novella about an uncompromising reverend and his wife and two sons. A River Runs Through It contains some of the greatest opening and ending lines in literary history. The river was cut by the world's great flood and runs over rocks from the basement of time. Not surprisingly, it captured the attention of Hollywood. I am haunted by waters. Norman McLean based the characters on his own family, drawing from his experiences growing up in Montana in the early 1900s, including the tragic killing of his brother, John McLean's uncle, Paul, a journalist who lived a wild and short life of hard drinking, gambling, and barroom brawls. How much of a river runs through it is truth versus fiction? It is a vision. It is not uh, a factual nonfiction narrative. And uh, you just have to accept that, I think. What is true about it is the way my father felt about it and the way it acted on him and shaped his life and now shapes the lives of others. And that is a different kind of truth. Well, what do you say? Big Blackfoot. In the movie, John's famously mysterious uncle was portrayed by Brad Pitt. If not for Paul, that novella never happens. If Paul had not been murdered, there would have been no river runs through it, none of my six books. Uh, things would have been very, very different. Have you tried to wrap your head around that ever? I have, yes. And I tried to wrap my head around that when I was writing Home Waters, which is what is this guy's legacy? By describing his relationship with his brother and how he tried to reach out to him and failed and gave him a part of himself that was basically refused. And Taking that to an eloquent level, he brought comfort and consolation to a whole group of people who have siblings that they have tried to reach, and that they have tried to help, and that they have failed to touch. Because you have to come to terms with the fact that some people you just can't reach. Well, that you still make the outreach. John, like his uncle, became a journalist, working for the Chicago Tribune, covering politics in D.C. for decades before he turned to books in the late 90s. He has since written five nonfiction books about devastating Western fires. His latest turn to his family's legacy may be more relevant than ever. You know, we're coming out of a pandemic. One thing people have discovered is that the outer world, which we're in right now, makes a big difference. You can come out here. It's more or less free, uh, it takes a bit of work to get here. And it gives back a sense of belonging, a sense of being somebody uh, that's connected to things that can 
sustain you and uh, connect you to your own family. The Montana John's father wrote about looks a lot different today. On Seeley Lake, where we met, motorboats have mostly replaced the canoes John still prefers. Development and dollars have moved in everywhere. Not all of it bad. Wetlands have been restored, and fish populations on the Blackfoot rebounded dramatically. The movie changed everything. It changed Montana. Uh, the book and the movie now define what Montana is, and it is getting overrun. <laughs> In, in some very good ways. In some very good ways. I mean, the, what happened with the, the restoration, the restoration story uh, is a story of a lot of money pouring in and local people using it very well. Uh, and it has become a model for how to restore other waters. At age 78, John McLean still works out of the modest cabin his dad revered. He's hoping the next generation will keep it going, even if his father never professed much interest in leaving a trace. When was this put in? Oh gosh, I was trying to remember. Uh, very early 90s, right after my dad was gone. Do people come to see this? Uh, this has become a big deal. And while you could do without the traffic, sometimes you like that people want to pay tribute. Uh, you got it exactly right. It's always fascinated me that there's no pictures of your dad available actually fishing. Why is that? Uh, well, we didn't do a lot of that. I mean, you'd take snapshots after you were done. People didn't carry cameras while they were fishing. And also, he was a little shy about that kind of thing. It only adds to the mystery. Well, you know, again, it's the unseen that makes the whole thing work. What makes fishing work It's what makes Paul work. It's what makes a lot of good writing work. It isn't what you put into it. It's what you leave out. Yes. Yes, indeed. And it's what makes this book work. Uh, there's never a time when I pick up River when I don't want to just keep reading it. Right. There's never a time when I visit this part of Montana when I want to go home. Um, it's just gorgeous. It is. I just think about the tragedy in the life being sort of an open to so much good that came out of these two lives. Um, Complications, he, good, good and bad, but yes, know. how that one murder affected so, so many, many lives. And the question that you asked, if you tried to wrap your head around how things would have changed if it was different, yeah. fascinating. He has been forever. Yeah. Yep.